Farms is a small Bitcoin miner that has made big waves last year. And I think that going into this year, it may have more to give us. So let's have a look, see here at BitFarms. Currently their hash rate is 6.5 exahash and they have huge plans to increase this by almost three times what they currently have. Let's take a look at their uh, press release for that. They're actually planning to get up to 21 exahash by the end of 2024. In fact, they want to nearly double their current hash rate to 12 in the first half and then go from 12 to 21 in the second half of 2024, doing a total of 3xing their current hash rate. And they only need to double to, to maintain their same market share of current, you know, what they're currently doing in, in order to continue to produce the same amount of Bitcoin they currently are. They just need to double, but they're going to triple it, meaning that they are going to not just stand still, but improve their operation. And that's pretty exciting. That's one of the reasons we saw that huge jump in their stock from two to almost what, $5, I think it was at one point last year. So that's the news that drove that because everyone in this space knows that that hash rate is the most important thing for the Bitcoin mining company, uh, especially after a halving when it becomes twice as difficult to um, mine Bitcoin for half the reward. So, or you get half the reward for mining Bitcoin. So it's basically increasing difficulty, uh, decreasing rewards. So you need to continue to grow, especially in these years. So that's what's going on there. They're going to be replacing this with the Bitman T21 miners. And if we go over here to, where is it at? This one right here. This is the miner that they are going to be buying. Um, you can see here the price is what? $16.1 or $16.10 per uh, terahash. Uh, it does 190 terahash. That's with a coupon. I'm assuming they got some sort of deal on it. I doubt they paid the $23 per terahash. Um, cost for these, especially considering they bought tens of thousands of them, they definitely got some sort of a deal. So I would estimate closer to the $16 mark, they probably got them for even less. But anyways, they're doing 190 terahash uh, per unit. Now, if you remember Bit Digital, they are buying the Antminer S19K units. Theirs are here's theirs they are about two thousand dollars so about a thousand dollars less so it's 33 percent less but if you look down here where my cursor is i'll ping it there it is you uh, they do 120 tera hash uh, per unit so with that lower hash rate they are cheaper but it's a significantly lower hash rate so they're about 30 percent cheaper or 33 percent cheaper ish uh, compared to T21s, but their hash rate, now if we calculate it real quick, the T21 was a 190 and these are 120. So if we do that quick division, we're looking at, they are, a, you know, the, the T21s are about 58.3% more uh, effective, more efficient, if you will, than the Antminer S19K. So even with the cost savings, they're still you know, 30% worse off compared to what BitFarms is buying over there at the Bit Digital shop. Uh, not to crap on them for their mining. I'm very happy to see that they're improving their exahash, but BitFarms are buying better miners than Bit Digital is. But Bit, Bit Digital has like a three prong approach to their income, so I'm not going to disparage them too much. And I actually kind of appreciate it to a certain extent, but, and I already talked about that in the last video. So go ahead and go and watch that if you want to know more about Bit Digital. Uh, so we also have on here, let's look at their valuation. Currently, Wall Street, Simply Wall Street, sees them as fairly valued. If we look to their price to shares ratio, that's basically um, their, or price to shares, price, yeah, price to sales, they're at 9.5, which actually puts them in the lower end of the pack compared to their competitors. We got Marathon at 23 price of sales. Um, CleanSpark at 16. Cypher at 11. BitFarms is only at 9.5 with BitDigital coming in at 7.6. So out of all these, BitDigital is probably the, the, the least overvalued or most undervalued, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, and let's take a look at to book. So their, their book is actually a bit high 
you generally want to see the book be more like three, like bit digital's coming right on, cipher's coming kind of right on and even slightly low. Marathon digital is almost double what you want to see for price to book. Um, so bit farms is a bit high, but not terribly high. You know, I mean, even marathon digital at double is not like insane or anything. It's just kind of high. Uh, what else can I look at here? Price to earnings. Yeah, these are all going to be negative. Haha. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, negative 19 here on theirs, which is normal. That's expected. They are um, not profitable. Uh, CleanSpark was profitable last quarter, and I'll do a video like this about them, and we'll see all those numbers when they come up. Uh, and if we go down here to ownership, let's see. Oh, financial health. Excuse me. Their balance sheet. This is super important. Uh, they get all green check marks from Simply Wall Street. They have wonderful asset to liability um, ratios here. At the short term, they had 83 million in assets, 30 million in liabilities. And then long term, they're looking at 250 in assets versus 15 in liabilities. It's fantastic. Their debt is like they've been paying off debt since 2022 and they're like almost completely debt free. They also, if we go down here, uh, they have that. That's that little red mark is their debt. Remember, Bit Digital didn't have any of that debt, um, so that's nice to see on their balance sheet compared to this one. But they have just a tiny amount of debt compared to their uh, their assets, so it's not really concerning at all. Uh, yeah, their debt to equity ratio is 5.7 percent. Uh, oh no, they reduced it. It's 3.5 percent. That's negligible. It's almost nothing. Um, look at some some blue chip companies and <laughs> compare that debt ratio. You'd be surprised. Uh, so anyways, on the cash runway, so they have a sufficient cash runway. That gives me tons of confidence that they're going to make it to and pass the halving. That gives me lots of confidence that they're going to be able to execute on their plans to increase their hash rate to, to maintain their competitiveness in the space and expand on that competitiveness. So I like all of those things when I look at this. Now let's take a look at ownership, and I'm actually going to bring up my um my app for that for Weeble because on the Sage Tracker and then inside of theirs it just looks a lot nicer. So let me bring that up here. All right. So what we can see here is that Investco is invested at two point eight six cents. So two dollars eighty six cents. Sorry, that was weird. Uh, at three point four one percent ownership of the company they put in about 31 million dollars worth about as much as they put into bit digitals meaning they might be just kind of throwing about that much at any of these that they want uh we're also we've got arrow street capital on here they got in at a dollar 99 they have something like two percent of the company two sigmas huge huge hedge fund uh they got in at a dollar 96 and they own 1.63 percent of the company representing about 15 million dollars and if we go down here and look at, we've got Investco. They're invested at $2.86 into Bit Farms, and they represent about 3.41% of the company. They put in 31, almost $32 million into Bit Farms. It's about the same amount that they put into Bit Digital, actually. Uh, so they have a similar amount of confidence, but they did increase their investment in Bit Digital a lot more than into Bit Farms but they have increased in bid farms as well. The second biggest owner is Arrow Street Capital. I actually haven't heard of them before. I don't really know exactly what institution they are. I mean, I mean that's their name obviously, but I I, I don't know like what their like reputation is or anything or or what they are exactly. And they're in at $1.99 at 2.77% of the company representing about $25 million. Got two sigma investments. They're a pretty big hedge fund. Uh one at at $1.96 and they represent 1.63% of the company. Uh, we got State Street down here, huge hedge fund. They got in at $1.40, lucky ducks. They doubled their investment already, more so, you know, doubled and more uh, with their $11 million investment. And they actually took some money out, which makes sense considering they're, they're more than double. Like, yeah, that's that's the dream right there uh, if you are a big company like that. BlackRock is also down here. They got, on in, a, got in at $1.50, so they also more than doubled their investment. They own 0.32% of the company have about $3 million in there. Let's take a look at some of these um, breakdowns of like increases and decreases of shares held. Uh, so first of all, when I'm in here, this is the profile of the company. Shows you institutions own 26% of this company, almost 27. Retail owns about 64, a little more than 64%. And insiders own 
eight, nine percent of the company. That concerns me a little bit, like getting close to that 10 percent mark is a little bit concerning for insiders to own. That could cause some issues if they were to start selling large amounts of shares. Uh, I mean, take a look at any time Elon sells Tesla shares or now Jeff Bezos selling Amazon shares. See what that happens. See what that does to the stock price here in the near future. But I don't like it. It concerns me. Um, 8.9% is a bit high for my preferences, my personal preferences, but it's not outrageous. And I don't think it will necessarily cause any major issues for this stock. Nothing like what was going on with Cypher before um, Bitfury started to um, sell some of its shares and reduce its ownership in the company a bit. Um, and I want to see that actually happen before I start looking at Cypher again. Anyways, let's take a look at the institutions and their increases and decreases. Actually, I want to look at all. Excuse me. I want to look at all. And I want to see what happened in January. So in January, uh, I don't know this first one. I don't know beta shares. So they're like, I don't know who those are. But BlackRock on January, in January, increased uh, by 15%. Their UK branch increased by 33.3%. Um, you got Investco, uh, they increased back in December 31st at 10% rate. Uh, another branch of Investco increased also at that time at about 10%. Uh, we also saw Citadel, they closed out at 99%. Man, I wonder where they bought in at. They closed out 99% of their position. They must have been up a few hundred percent, honestly. But we don't like Citadel for a couple of reasons. Uh, they were the clearinghouse that uh, was causing some of the AMC and GameStop fiascos going on. So generally, the retail uh, investors don't like Citadel. Uh, State Street also decreased a little bit. That's understandable. Uh, and that's all I really wanted to look at here with the shareholders. Like, we got some big increases, a few decreases. But the large, large institutions are still uh, putting their money into this stock. And not at an alarming rate yet. Like, they, they, like in BitDigital, you'll see sometimes like thousands of percent of increases in it and you haven't seen that in bit farms yet which makes me feel like that could still be yet to come especially if they reach that 12 exohash in the first half of the year and show that they're able to execute on their plans we might see some much bigger institutional investment in the second half of 2024 going into that q4 season and oh so let's look at price let's look at valuation right let's look at their price action and such right now so Bit Farms, their highest peak they've ever reached is back here. It was in 2021. Well, 2020. Excuse me. They kind of almost got there again in 2021. December 2020, almost four years ago, they got up to $10. And that was on a significantly lower hash rate than they're going to have this time. That was with less institutional investment going into Bitcoin and going into this asset specifically um that was with it being a new miner you can see they only came out in 2019 so this was after the drop they survived this crypto winter here from 2019 to 2020 and that was one of the reasons i actually picked this one up this is not a suggestion to buy sell or hold any assets whatsoever uh please do your own research come to your own conclusions and make your own decisions about any assets that you choose to invest in um, but this is one of the big reasons I bought into BitFarms was because I looked back here in their history. They came out right, they went public right after, like a, like a year after Bitcoin fell from 20,000 to what was it, like three or 4,000 and everyone was saying it was dead going into, um, and they survived that entire winter into 2020 and then came up and then they survived the majority of the winter after 2021 and 2022 and 2023. Uh, so I felt confident that they could survive again, and they have. And I'm very happy about that. That was actually one of the stipulations I was looking at when choosing which Bitcoin miners I was actually going to buy. I wanted to make sure that they had enough history to have at least survived a good portion of the last winter. Anyways, they reached 10. So I'm looking at them, and I'm saying, okay, this company is going to have 12 x a hash here first half of the year that's going to be double what they currently have 
clean spark currently and if i go to compass mining and i'm going to do a video specifically on this article here later but not right now uh clean spark has 10. and if we go to clean sparks chart let me actually just bring them up. if we go to clean sparks chart their high is up here at 40. 42 dollars i mean their highest high is higher than that but this is the cycle high their cycle high for 2021 was $42 with slightly more exohash than BitFarms currently has. I guess it's 40%. It's not slight. It's actually a lot. Um, and 20% less exohash than they're going to have in the first half of this year. So if I'm comparing apples to apples here, and I'm going to go and look at the shares outstanding, because I know that's important, and I know that somebody will say something if I don't. So they have BitFarms. This is BitFarms now. They have 273,907,000 shares outstanding. CleanSpark. CleanSpark has 198 million shares outstanding. I conveniently have already put this into my calculator. And that means that BitFarms has approximately 38.3% more shares outstanding, meaning that if we were going to do an apples to apples comparison of you know price potential in this next bull run based on previous highs now that historic action is not a prediction of the future anything can happen we could go to zero we could go to a million okay we can't go to a million that'd be insane but we could go to like i don't know 100 bucks there you go zero or 100 that's our measurement right now anyways meaning that if bitfarms reached the same market cap that clean spark had in the past or will reach based on a similar hash rate and, and action, we can expect it to be about 38.3% less. Okay, let me bring up my other calculator here. So that means that uh, I think I've already done my price predictions with CleanSpark, and I was saying that I'm looking around like an $80 target for them. And if I haven't, uh, let me know, uh, and I'll go through and talk about that, because that is my current mental target that I'm looking for for CleanSpark that I'd like to see out of it. Doesn't mean it's going to happen, but that means if CleanSpark could achieve $80, let's say it could achieve $80, then BitFarms could achieve $50. And that's insane. From from 3 bucks to 50 But, I mean, if we look at things like Marathon, its, it's bottom was $3.50, and its peak is like $84. So it's not too far fetched and what did i say clean spark was 43 was its previous high so let's do that 43 times by what is this 62 or 60 63.7 63.7 where's my button why isn't my button working there we go so 27.39 dollars so if clean spark were to reach the same market value as Clean, if BitFarms was to reach the same market value that CleanSpark had in the previous bull run, we could ex expect about $27 out of it, which is not quite a 10x from its current values, but uh, probably a 10x from when most of us got in. Honestly, I think my um, average cost on this is $1.50, so that would be insane for me. Uh, so that's what I'm looking at here with BitFarms. I'm expecting at some point in the future, this thing's going to take this 10 and send it in the review mirror and we're going to go all the way up somewhere maybe 27 and i'm going to mark 27 dollars in here a little trick if you double click on this bad boy you can set that metric right there 27 oh i almost ha had it bang on all right so that's where i want to see it that's not i mean i'll sell it well well before that we hit 22 bucks on that but that's my target and I think you could get there. I really honestly think it probably could get there. Uh, so let's take a look at current price action. What's going on right now? So right now, we have that cup and handle action that shot us up to where we currently are. Okay. We got lots of gaps below us and not a lot of support. We, we blasted through all the resistance that we had built here in this $3 range. Went through it like it wasn't there. That's usually not super healthy. Usually you want to see a re a retest of previous highs or you know a gap fill or a retest of like this zone right here where you have a lot of support i do want to see that i mean this isn't nvidia we don't just go to the sky forever no. 
I mean, we could, but that would be, I wouldn't trust it. And I don't trust this move here from 212 to 360, what, 367? I don't trust that. I want to see that come down and retest $3, to be honest. I want to see it come back down here and test $3 and then bounce off of that and go up. Or at the very minimum, very minimum, I want to see it come down to like 319, 320 maybe 315 and then bounce from there. But I do think that we may be ahead of schedule on some of these moves. I don't know if we'll see a 60% dump like we did in the past here. It seems as though these markets are being propped up like these, these investments, these plays are being held up um, probably by institutional money. They are not acting exactly as we expected them to as they have in previous cycles where you see these huge dumps going into the halving. We saw a small one. Um, but there is an extra thing at play that I've mentioned in the last few videos, which is the Lunar New Year pump, which we have been seeing in Bitcoin. And I'll show that chart here in a moment. And that does come to an end next week. So if we are going to see a big 60% retracement, it's going to happen after next week and before the halving. So March could be a pretty brutal month. So be prepared to, to see some, some, some red in your account here going into the future. And like I said before, this is not a suggestion to buy, sell, or hold any assets whatsoever. There's simply my thoughts on these charts and these assets and where I think things could go based on seasonality, based on current events, based on all sorts of things. Uh, but let's take a look here. Yeah. We're getting caught up in this little space right here. There's not too much there to hold us down. I think like the real resistance would be up here about 420 ish in that in that range. Let me put a little box up there about right here to about give me my box. From about right here to about right there. That's where I'm seeing resistance above. And this is where I'm seeing support below right now. Now, if, let me get this a little closer. If this can't hold right here, we're gonna go right back down into this ascending channel down here and get in here into these prices around $2 again. Like that could happen, that could totally happen. I don't think it will. I do think that that's a thing that's behind us. In fact, I can probably get rid of this one right here. Wait, my keys are not working today. Uh, yeah, I could, get, I could get rid of that. I do think this ascending channel could either provide support at the top of it or if we enter it we're coming down to that two dollar range but this is just absolutely parabolic and at some point it needs to breathe and it looks like it's starting to do that now but like i said we can stay over bought for a while the lunar new year effect is still in play we could see this thing come up to four dollars 420 440 even before we get a sell-off and if we got a you know 60 percent sell-off from here guess what that's you know not not terribly low. Uh, so we might be, we may have seen the bottom down here at $2 uh, back in January. So keep that in mind looking forward. Now let's take a look at Bitcoin. Like I just mentioned with the Lunar New Year effect that's been going on since, was it here the ninth? Yeah. We've only had two red candles in that entire time. And one was barely red and was very bullish with that wick on the bottom this other one also pretty bullish with a huge wick on the bottom barely coming lower than the day before and we're blue today or green rather if that's how your chart looks we're, we're, we're green today with another bullish looking candle right here with almost looking like uh what is it a shooting star candle when it looks like that i guess you could also call it a hammer um yeah this is this is good this looks good this looks like it's poised to potentially go up a little bit higher one more push in the year in fact, I really like this since it's got a channel growing here. So we got this nice little, especially right here, those two, those line up nice, but let's go here. Oh, this little channel here, if we break out above this line right here, we're looking at 55. We could easily crack 55 if we get above out of this channel uh, with momentum. And I mean, we are over, I mean, we're over bought, but not terribly. We could go a little higher, honestly. And uh, we've done it before. Unless I see a candle like this one right here, 
on uh, January 11th, where you had this huge wick on top and the red body. Yeah, that was super bearish. That was a terrifying candle. Um, I haven't seen anything like that. All these are bullish candles. Even the red ones are bullish. So I'm not too concerned about this move right now. I do think that this inverse head and shoulder we had back in January uh, and early February is going to propel us with this Lunar New Year momentum probably a little higher before we burn off and fall back down into the 40s, uh, maybe even high 30s if it's, you know, intense enough. But that's really the only chance we've got of getting a big sell-off and getting good entries here going into the future. Uh, so please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a profitable day.